much to talk about, Brad, yeah. in terms of the markets and some of these stocks here. Absolutely. You mentioned NVIDIA. They were up as high as 5% on the day. Looks like they closed in that range. Tesla, though, looks like they're going to close down more than 13.5% since you mentioned them as our biggest laggard there. Joining us now to help break everything down is Jeff Tomasulo, CEO at Vespula Capital, good friend of the show. Jeff, great to have you back. Hey guys, thank you for having me. Uh, Jeff, I usually ask for one big takeaway from the day, but we've just wrapped out the quarter, the trading week, the session. Right. It's like game, set, and match for the quarter. So <laughs> well, give us you your big to, takeaway you, from You the mentioned quarter. it in the beginning uh, of your segment is that what a quarter. Yeah. Right? I mean, we haven't seen a quarter like this since 2010. The S&P 500 up 7.5%, the Dow Jones Industrial Average up over 8 the NASDAQ over 8 crude, Brent up over 6.5%. I mean, these are some large moves. And then also in this quarter, we forget that the uh, S&P 500 entered the longest bull market we have ever seen in the history of the stock markets. Now, from the outsider, right, you'd be like, hey, this is all good. To me, that's some warning signs that are started to pop up, right? True. You have to say, if you've never seen something like this in the history of the stock market, maybe it is time now to start to hey, ask yourself questions. Where do I go protect myself? How do I protect myself? Because, again, unusual times. Well, let's talk about what kind of protection you actually need. Is this going to be like knee pads? It's going to be okay? Or is it going to be like full-on armor because of how far we've gone and how much then, if you're that high, you're going to come down? See, this is the billion-dollar question, right? No one knows when the market's going to turn, right? No one knows if the market's going to continue to go up for the next year, five years. But sustainability is going to be hard to do. Now, we could have a 10% correction, but if there are certain binary events that occur, like we saw something come out of Italy today or last night that affected the markets in the, in the beginning of the day, but the market shrugged it off like it's been doing for the last eight years, 10 years. It shrugs off any bad information that comes out. We saw it earlier in the month, we had Turkey, right? So there are all these different things. So when you ask me, is it going to be 10%? Is it going to be 20%? Is it going to be a 40% correction? You don't know. But what I do know is that what we see is a lot of complacency out there, right? When you look at the, the VIX, who gauges the fear in the S&P 500, I think it's around 14 right now. The mean is around 16. And we saw last year at all-time lows, right? Now it's starting to creep up. You see interest rates finally starting to creep above almost 3% three, uh, 3 in the 10-year. Right. These are some of the things that are starting to come out where you have to say to yourself, it's time maybe to protect myself. I want to talk about the complacency just real quick. Uh, since you, you brought up the word, uh, what does it mean? Does that mean investors are just like dialing it in and they're just like coasting right now? I why feel like they? that's exactly and, like and when you see that? people shrug off news like what's coming out of Italy. When we heard this, what was it, three years ago, four years ago, when Greece was on the table, we had a much bigger reaction. Right, so I think a lot of people are just like, hey, I've heard this before, I've seen this before, I'm just gonna let things ride. And that's the worst thing to do. And I know a lot of younger people have not seen a correction of more than 10%. Think about that. There's a generation on Wall Street right now that started in 2008 that has never seen a correction of more than 10% that has lasted more than three to four days. So, and I'm not throwing out like alarms like this is over. Right. I'm just saying be smart, be diligent about doing your homework and saying, hey, I've made a lot of gains. Yeah. How do I protect myself? But saying that at a time as well where we still have yet to get two critical trade deals inked right now, one with China and then with our neighbors to the north as well, we know that Absolutely. those have to come through. So if those do come through, do, do those give you some sense of comfort in terms of where we would move forward after that? And a little does bit that more. happen be, before the end of the year? Absolutely. I don't know if it's going to happen at the end of the year. I think okay. everybody's anticipating that. That's why, again, it lacks, right? My eyes, if I see a trade war that continues to drag on, yeah. that's going to hurt some major corporations in the United States and around the world, which, hence, in the second quarter of next year, you're going to start to see that in their EPSs. And, in their growth prospects, right? What's that gonna do? That's gonna hurt the, the stock market. I think everybody's thinking that we're gonna settle this trade war before the end of the year. I'm not so certain. I wanna talk about the social impacts of this because you brought up 2008 as the date. It's been 10 years since the financial crisis. Just like the Great Depression, uh, we saw that actually, you know, unfortunately for a generation, was, it was awful, but really it spurred a lot of economic growth. Was the financial crisis in some ways uh, a blessing in disguise? Ooh, that's a, that's a great question because I think, yes, it was but I don't know if we've seen enough pain. One of the things that happened in, in the Great Depression, you, you know this, anybody who studies history, I mean, there was massive amounts of pain right. that went on within the general population. 
I say there was pain in the general population in the United States in 2008, but nothing nowhere near what we went through, which you think about this, right. our great grandparents, right? They had a certain way they invested. They had a certain mindset. I don't think we actually changed the way we invest. And I see that now when you look at pot stocks, right. when you look at Bitcoin, Till right, right. Our, gra our grandparents, our great grandparents who went through would never have thought, hey, this is the time, this is different. And it's different too, because millennials really grew up with uh, in this 10 years without seeing something like this. So God, God forbid something horrible happens, a generation will be the first time they experience it versus those that saw their parents go through it back in the 90s and the early 2000s. Absolutely, and I'm not saying, listen, I'm not saying we can't take advantage of the, still the upside. I'm saying take stock of what you have, and I'm also saying what part of the cycle are we in. When you start to see the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States start to raise interest rates, you hear the ECB starting to hint about raising interest rates. We're closer to the other side of the cycle than right. we are, you know, closer to the beginning. Jeff, does that make sense? Yeah. Absolutely does. Uh, always a pleasure to have you on. We got well, thank you, you guys again, uh, for your insight. Jeff Tomasulo, who is the CEO at Vespula Capital, joining us here today on Chatter. Thanks again.